Hello, my name is Peter Bonfito, and I'm a curator on the Getty Research Institute's online exhibition, The Legacy of Ancient Palmyra. And today, I'd like to welcome all of you to the GRI, the Getty Research Institute's uh, special collections seminar room, where I have laid out a number of items that are all from one archive. And this is an archive of materials related to Louis-Francois Cassat's trip to um, the Eastern Mediterranean in the 1780s. And Louis-Francois Cassat is a integral part of the online exhibition, and it, it, he is really one half of the uh, really extraordinary materials that the Research Institute has that documents not only Palmyra, um, but also other sites, ancient, important ancient sites in the ancient world. And so today, to focus on Kassah's archive, um, I do want to show some of the materials from the exhibition itself, which is um, this city plan, which we used to make an interactive map out of, so that the different sites and uh, different monuments within Palmyra itself, and this is a city plan of Palmyra that Kassah made in the uh, 1870s, I mean, um, excuse me, the 1780s, and um, one thing to, to keep in mind when looking at all of these prints, which are etchings, and in some cases etchings with engraving, um, these are made from earlier drawings that Kassah made when he was on site, uh, either at Palmyra or other sites throughout the Mediterranean. So after the uh, expedition, which I'll talk about a little bit more uh, in a few minutes, after the expedition, uh, these drawings were brought back to uh, France and then a real small army of engravers and etchers and printmakers um, transformed these drawings into these really wonderful high quality prints. And the collection itself uh, here at the Research Institute is really phenomenal because these uh, these what you would consider large books are actually proof plates for the publication. And the publication does exist in a number of libraries around the world, although it is very rare. But what is different about this collection is that it is the production collection for that publication. So what we have here, we have the, um, the plates themselves, and I could flip through a few of these to show you different um, perhaps familiar images from the exhibition. Um, here we have the Temple of Bell and other material that we used. But along with the near finished and near final uh, prints um, are, all of this, are all of these other um, materials in the archive, which includes a prospectus for the publication itself, which outlines the, in this, uh, basically summarize what the publication is going to include. It has a handwritten manuscript that details uh, Kassah's itinerary um, through the Eastern Mediterranean, but it also has some really nice um, um, quotations that we pulled from, from for the exhibition. And then it has um, actual production materials that show either some of the pricing for the, uh, the prints themselves, how the cost of the publication itself was, uh, was laid out, and then Finally, a, uh, um, a preparatory uh, table of contents. It's really the outline for the publication. It, it has the caption information, which in, which in our version uh, here at the Research Institute does not include the captions. So a lot of the caption material actually we can pull from that document. So moving from the production itself and talking about uh, Kassad's trip, he in the uh, the 1780s uh, was part of a diplomatic mission from uh, the French government to the Ottoman Empire. So in this map here, it, you can see the uh, a very um, general outline of the Ottoman Empire at the time. So all of the different places that Kassah went, um, starting in present-day Istanbul and, and getting a, uh, a, a firman, a, a basically a rite of passage, to go to the rest of the, the empire, um, and then all the, making it all the way down to Egypt. So what Kassad did was he documented um, these, these ruins um, as much as he could. Kassad himself was trained as an architect 
He's a landscape painter. He was um, a, in some ways, a typical French academic neoclassical um, artist or figure. He went to Rome and studied there, drew the antiquities there. He went to Greece as well, um, Sicily, Venice. He went to all of these places like many people of his generation. But what he did that was completely um, extraordinary was he went to places like Palmyra and was able to document and um, bring back images um, of these places for um, a European audience. And the idea was to then publish them in these very large books. Because I think of the French Revolution and because of the expense of the project and then probably some other factors, um, the publication did not uh, reach a very wide audience and which is why Cassa today is not as well known as other um, neoclassical artists of his of his period, but during his time, he was known as um, this artist uh, traveler who had gone as far as Palmyra. So he was um, important um, in his own time. So just to show you a few of the other uh, places that he went, this is Egypt here, and I'll just flip through a few, and he of course does people, as well as architecture, and as I said, he was an architect, and one of the other things he did, as well as um, make a lot of very detailed drawings. Uh, he also made a lot of models, so he uh, was responsible for making a lot of cork models that are um, in collections in France today. But this was one of his real uh, signature um, experiences and enterprises. So to show you um, some of the, the work that he did. And these, again, these are images that are composite. They're, they are, he's using sketches, and then he's bringing them to the printmakers, and then they're creating a kind of composite image out of that material. Just stop on this one here. And he also did some fantastic views as well, which are real fantasies of what it was like in antiquity. So there is a, a lot of uh, imagination in, inside of a lot of these prints as well as technical renderings. So I want to look at some of the other material in the archive. So we have this material and um, the material that's in other collections, but what we also have is 67 prints and drawings from the archive itself that uh, are proof plates that never made it into these books, never made it into the other publications. And I really love these. I think they're really phenomenal. And one of the reasons is they're unfinished. And so it gives us a sense not only of the production of how prints were made, but also gives us um, a really a different uh, window into um, how these things um, really atmospherically kind of come, come alive in a lot of ways too. So the one here that um, you're looking at now, you can see how the sky of course isn't there. That was one of the last things that would be put in, but, but all of the lines would have been, been thickened and darkened um, in different series of prints. So they would do test prints like this one, and then they would um, uh, make other prints and prints and prints until they got the final one that then the printmaker and, and in some cases the artist would then sign off on. And we also have things in the collection like this, which are drawings, which are basically tracings of other drawings. So it's another part of the, of the preparation of the final print. Um, and this is on a special kind of tracing paper that was used uh, at the time. This is the site of Baalbek. So this is a almost companion site to Palmyra. A lot of the expeditions of the 18th and 19th century, they go to Palmyra and then they also go to Baalbek. So Baalbek is in Lebanon and it's a uh, really one of the most important um, cities of the Eastern Roman Empire and has these massive temples. And so along with um, doing these landscape views, in larger views, we have these very detailed architectural studies. And um, these are different elements, architectural elements from the main temples, because these were used not only for, um, for just the pleasure of looking at them and learning about them, a lot of these designs and motifs would then be replicated in the decorative arts of either France or, or England, um, Germany, and uh, other places in Europe that would then actually really lift these motifs and use them in furniture, in plates, in silver, in, in anything you can think of, um, they would want to replicate. So this was, um, in a way, doing service to that, um, that entire tradition, and that is one of the reasons that these prints would have been, um, would have been sought after. So the expedition itself, I'm gonna move over here to um, 
a few more of the proof plates and we can look at this one here, which is the uh, beginning of his trip. So as I said, Hassa went with a diplomatic mission, uh, the French ambassador to the Ottoman Sultan. And this is a um, really incredible um, depiction of the Sultan going to uh, Friday prayers. Um, so he's going from Topkapi Palace in um, present-day Istanbul and then going to presumably the Blue Mosque um, kind of down the street in this incredible parade. So along with the um, architecture, which is one of the fountains um, in Istanbul, he, there would also be, of course, the costumes of the people there and the, the armor and the horses and the pageantry of everything. But this one as well is a proof plate, so you can see that the trees were uh, planned to be put in there. So this is, a, this is a long process where you have multiple people working on a plate and they're all designing it um, and they want to do it as efficiently as possible and they do it in these, these, in, um, these uh, small steps along the way. So kind of skipping around, Kassal went to, um, went from uh, Istanbul and then he went down basically the coast into um, modern day Syria, modern day Lebanon, moder modern day Israel, and then down to Egypt, um, and along the way documenting the great, the great monuments of those places. And so um, just because we have limited time, I just pulled a few of the ones from Egypt to show, um, of course, the Sphinx, which um, then, of course, echoes uh, later depictions you see of Napoleon and um, other, other um, really throughout the 19th century, this uh, fascination with the Sphinx and the pyramids. And of course, this is a very constructed, almost skewed perspective of the site so that you can have the pyramids and the Sphinx in a, in, in a very balanced way. And of course, the Sphinx head itself is exaggerated, to put it lightly. Um, so then we have this. Uh, this is another one of my favorites just because it, again, shows the process. So you have these wrestlers and you have you know, them not being fully uh, articulated and fully, um, fully uh, finished and shadowed and, and modeled. Um, but then you have these, you know, what you would assume would be the French uh, diplomats there kind of visiting. So you have this really interesting exchange of cultures going on as well, which is an important thing to document. And then lastly, I just want to show a few because this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily know about, even people that know a little bit about Kassa, um, because he also went to Cyprus. And so these are images that are also um, rare, rarely seen. And so Cyprus was a very important um, uh, area in the, in the medieval period, especially during the Crusader period, where it became one of the uh, kind of last holdouts for the, the Western uh, Christians that were um, engaging in the Crusades. So they built these massive uh, cathedrals and um, which are not as well, and, and monasteries and things like that. So that he was able to go there, and you also have to think about, you also have to think about the traditions of the French and the French Crusaders, and then Kassa going, you know, in their footsteps in a lot of ways. So the archive itself is really interesting. You think about Kassa, because if you look forwards and backwards, the different time periods and the relationships um, that the West, and in particular France, had with the region, um, this is a really kind of pivotal point in that, and you can see why there was this real desire to document these sites and then bring these images back to a European audience. So that is, um, that is my introduction to uh, this archive, which is a fantastic archive at the Getty Research Institute. Much of this is digitized and can be viewed online. Um, which, is, which is in the library catalog, the Getty Research Institute library catalog, which you can get to from um, many of the exhibition images. So that you can click on links and you will find your way to our resources. So please uh, enjoy them. Um, I would just like to end with giving you the prompt to look at the online exhibition um, on the legacy of ancient Palmyra. So thank you very much.